Hi everyone. Today we are going to be solving AQA, the GCSE Chemistry, Higher Tier Paper 1. Today we are going to be solving June 2019. This is a part 2 video. We are solving from question number 4 to question number 6. This question is about atomic structure. Atom contains subatomic particles. Table 2 shows properties of two subatomic, subatomic particles. Name of the particle. So we can see neutron. Neutron has a relative mass of 1 and relative charge of 0. And relative charge of uh, positive 1 is actually proton. So relative mass will be 1. An element has an element X has two isotopes. The isotopes have different mass number. Define the term mass number. So when we want to define the term mass number, we have to understand the number of protons plus the number of neutrons makes the mass number. <laughs> Why is the mass number different in two isotopes? The isotopes have different number of neutrons. Thereby, you know, it will have a different mass number. The model of the atom changed as more evidence was discovered. The plum pudding model suggested that the atom was a ball of positive charge with electrons embedded in it. Evidence from the alpha particle scattering experiment led to a change in the model of the atom from the plum pudding model. So, explain how this happened. All right. All right. When we did the alpha particle experiment, most alpha particles passed straight through the gold foil leaf. So, since it could pass through the, straight through the gold foil leaf, it was considered that the atoms are mostly empty spaces. Some alpha particles were deflected, all right? So if the alpha particles, which is quite heavy, if it gets deflected, we can actually conclude that the atom has a positively charged nucleus. And that positively charged nucleus, all right, is pushing the positively charged alpha particles towards left and right. So the answer can be written as This question is about ammonia. Complete the dot and cross diagram for the ammonia molecule shown in figure 6. Show only the electrodes in the outer shell atom. Ammonia contains nitrogen with 3 hydrogen. If we represent the nitrogen with, uh, you know, uh, dot, uh, the hydrogen with a cross, nitrogen has 5 outer shell electron, where 3 electrons get shared between the hydrogen, and each hydrogen shares 1 electron. Give one limitation of using a dot and cross diagram to represent an ammonia molecule. So basically, the limitation of a dot and cross diagram is that it does not show the shape, all right, uh, of the molecule. It is just two-dimensional. Explain why ammonia has a low boiling point. You should refer to the structure and bonding in your answer. Ammonia has small molecules. Ammonia has weak intermolecular forces. So little energy is needed to overcome these intermolecular forces.
Now, ammonia reacts with oxygen in the presence of metal oxide catalyst to produce nitrogen and water. Which metal oxide is most likely to be a catalyst for this reaction? All right. You see, metal oxides, those that actually act as catalysts are transition elements. So here, the only transition element is chromium. So this should be the answer. Figure 7 shows the displayed formula equation for the reaction. Pour ammonia reacting with 3 oxygen to produce nitrogen and water. The bond energies are given here. Calculate the overall energy change for the reaction. In a question like this, we will have to find out what is the energy for the bonds broken. And then we will have to find out the energy for the bonds made. And then we will have to calculate the overall energy change. Guys, to determine how many bonds of NH we have, we can write it down here. We have 12 NH bonds. And we have 3 OO bond. On the other side, we have 2 NN bond. And on this side, we have 12 OH bond. Explain why the reaction between ammonia and oxygen is exothermic. Use values from your calculation in question number 5.5. So basically, we will see that 7458 kilojoule is released as an energy and 6186 kilojoule is needed as an energy. Alright, so since the energy released is greater than the energy needed to break the bonds, thereby the overall reaction is exothermic because energy is released to the surrounding. So the answer should be written like this. Figure it shows the reaction profile for the reaction between ammonia and oxygen. Complete figure 8 by labeling the activation energy overall energy change. So guys, the activation energy is definitely going to be the peak. So this is the activation energy. And guys, the amount of energy change is overall energy change. So this is overall energy change. This question is about chemical cells. A student investigated the voltage produced by different chemical cells. Figure 9 shows the apparatus. We can see voltmeter, electrode X, copper, electrolyte solution. Okay, so the electrodes are made from copper and there is an electrode X. 
Use cobalt as electric X. Record the cell voltage. Repeat steps one and two using metal as the electric, different metals as the electric X. Okay. This was the method. Now suggest to control variable used in this investigation. So one of the control variable used for this particular investigation should be all right, the electrolyte solution. All right, the volume of the electrolyte solution, the volume of the electrolyte solution, the concentration of the electrolyte solution. All right. So uh, and you know the compound that is used in the electrolyte solution, they should be same in all three experiments. Guys, however, I wrote temperature of the solution as the first point because this is what the Marsky actually wrote. The problem is in this kind of experiment, what we're going to see is that as the particular process continues, it may generate temperature by itself. So yes, the starting temperature of the solution should be the same. All right. However, as the reaction proceeds, the reaction may increase in temperature. All right. So that's one of the issues where temperature of the solution, I personally do not favor if we don't write starting temperature of the solution. Since it is it was written in the masking as the first point, so I decided to mention it anyway. But the other two points are the best points. Table four shows the student result, table four. Voltage of cell in volts. Write the six metals used for electrode X in order of reactivity. Use table four, justify your order of reactivity. Most reactive, okay. So guys, when we are talking about most reactive, we have to see which one has the highest amount of voltage. So the highest voltage is for magnesium. So we will put magnesium at the top. All right, so this is number one. And then in a little bit of comparison, let's see which one has the greater value. All right, number two. Number three. Then we have number four. Then we have number five, and finally we have number six. All right, guys. So this is what should be written here. Now the justification. The justification is the higher the positive voltage, all right, the more reactive the metal. And you know, in this, in the case of silver, we can see the silver has a negative voltage. That's because silver has is you know even more. It's it's like less reactive than even copper. That's why it has a negative voltage. Which of the following pairs of metals would produce the greatest voltage when used as the electrodes in the cell? Okay, guys, the metal that has the highest reactivity difference will produce the greatest amount of voltage. So let's see. We can see, all right, the uh, options that we have, all right, magnesium and cobalt, these are relatively close to reactive. So we will not get better result. Nickel and cobalt, close reactivity. Nickel and tin, close reactivity. So magnesium and tin is the one should be the answer. Guys, if we take magnesium and tin, let's see the values here. Magnesium is 2.71 and tin has a value of 0 0.48. So when we will subtract 0 0.48 from 2.71, that will be the voltage. So you can see guys, since magnesium has the highest value and tin having a relatively low value compared to cobalt which was the other option actually you can see here magnesium and cobalt so that's why this is the correct answer
Hydrogen fuel cells can be used to power different forms of transport. Some diesel trains are being converted to run on hydrogen fuel cells. A newspaper article referred to the converted train as a new steam trains. Suggest why? You know, the main reason why we can call this a steam train is because when hydrogen burns, when hydrogen reacts in the fuel cell, all right, it's oxidized to produce water only. And water is released as a vapor, all right, as a steam, all right, like the old trains, you know, back in the old days. So that's why it can be called a steam. Guys, we are done with this particular part of the video. Thank you for watching the video up until this part. And guys, uh, the thing is, you know, in a day where we don't have even attention for five minutes, the fact that you're watching a 20 minutes video, all right, up until the end, this is a, you know, big thing already. So congratulations, all right, and uh, uh, best of luck for your exam. See you in the next video, guys. Bye-bye.